What's up, folks? Uh, just figured we'd pop on here and take you along on today's little adventure. It's not really an adventure, but, you know, we're doing the best we can. We're doing, taking you along with whatever we're doing, no matter how good or how boring it is. This one might be a little interesting. Um, but anyway... We're going to be messing with a 2101 today and probably an 036 Pro. Um, we're going to be doing, probably just going to be putting a bar on this 2101 and uh, taking this 2101 and the 036 out for a little rip, see how they run. Uh, the 2101 hasn't been started and ran in a long time. Um, I had to put a crank seal in it and whatnot, but... Anyway, that's what this video is going to be about. So if you're interested in watching, continue to watch. I greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Um, if you're going to watch the video um, and you and you haven't already. So uh, anyway, that's going to be what this video is about. So uh, without further ado, we'll get you set up here and uh, we'll take you along. All righty. Well... <laughs> What we have here on the bench, this big behemoth is uh, Mike Fleming's 2101. Sorry, Mike, I know I've had this thing forever. And when I say forever, I mean forever. It's been a while. But it's just been so dang busy and had a lot going on. Um, this is my buddy's shop. I don't get time to get up here as much as I used to. Uh, it's about an hour ride from my house up here. Um, so I don't get a whole, whole lot of time to, uh, do what I want to do, but, uh, I figured I'd bring y'all along and, uh, give you a little bit of, uh, an update on it. Um, as you can see, Mike, it's got a few more parts on it than when you sent it to me. Uh, I did go through last night and put a crank seal in it and looked everything over a little bit and put it all back together. Um, the clutch has got a little bit of wear, but it's fine. It's not hurt. The spring's fine, seems to be. Uh, it's an old saw, and it's actually in really good shape to be as old as it is. It's, set, it's still got the muffler deflector and this little piece right here that usually gets ripped out. Um, this piece gets knocked off or ripped out a lot on these things, 2101s, 2100s, yada, yada, yada. These things get ripped out a lot. But, uh, anyway, yep, we got a crank seal put in it last night. Checked out the carburetor. It was fair. So, once I got it all back together, I tried to, uh, fire it up and... It didn't take as much as I thought it would to get it fired up. I didn't film any of that. But uh, it was late, and it was kind of spur of the moment. Things were kind of sporadic, so that's one of my reasons for not really filming it. But anyway, so this here's where we're at with it. The top cover's off. The air filter's off. Don't have a bar on it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and put the top cover back on, air filter back on. And we're going to stick a bar on it and take it outside to see how it's going to do before we start doing any kind of mods to this saw, any kind of performance work. I just want to make sure I got a solid foundation. I always like to make sure I got a solid foundation before I start, especially with these old ones. You never know how they're going to act, really. They might run fine on the bench, and they might sit there and do that all day long. But when you take them out and run them, it's a whole different story. So that's what we're going to find out before we begin. And then hopefully everything goes to plan. I'm going to go ahead and get a degree wheel slapped on this thing maybe today. Get some timing numbers. And uh, if I'm feeling froggy, I may go ahead and uh, snatch the top end off this thing after I get my timing numbers and uh, figure out what direction we're gonna go with this thing. 
Mike said he wants it pretty spicy, so we're gonna give Mike what he wants. We're gonna make this thing pretty spicy. It's gonna make a nice work saw. Um, and it, it'll probably run with some more modern saws. By the time we're all done, it should out, it should outrun them. Um, not saying it'll outrun everything, but it should run pretty fair. Uh, never done one of these before, but the ports in these are very similar to any 2 Series Husky that's closed port. So like a 272, for instance, or a 288. The port design on these is very similar. So I'm, not, I'm, I'm familiar with the port design, but never done one of these particularly. But anyway... That's enough rambling. We're gonna uh, start putting this thing together. Actually, I think I'm messing up already because I believe you have to put this on first and then the air filter. So I've had, <coughs> those of you that don't know me very well or haven't been watching my videos for a long time or whatever, I'm pretty familiar with this chassis, um, I've never, like I said, I've never ported one, but I've had, I've had two 2100s before of my own. And one of them was, the first one I ever got was, had some scoring and I ended up having to rebuild it. And at the time you really couldn't get a whole lot of parts for these. These were kinda, these were pretty, pretty scarce. Um, they still are. I'm not saying that you can get parts for them now, but if you need a piston or even now the aftermarket's making cylinders for these, um, you know, I mean, not a huge fan of aftermarket stuff, but when it comes to these old saws like this and you can't get parts, anything, is better than nothing. That's the way I see it. But the story with that 2100 I was telling you about, the only piston I could find for it was a VEC. And the piston that was in my saw, the original piston was a thin ring piston. And the piston that I ordered was a thick ring piston because that's the only one you can get. You can't get a thin ring piston which was fine. I wasn't upset about that. I was happy to get it. I had to do a little grinding on the piston to make it work cause it didn't, it wasn't a direct fit. The wrist pin clearance wasn't wide enough. The wrist pin on this, on, the, on my saw was very wide and it, it just wouldn't fit. So I had to do some grinding so that the piston could rock back and forth and do its thing. And I got that saw together. I put that saw together on my coffee table in the house because it was cold and I didn't have nowhere else to work and I really wanted that saw to run. And this was before I started doing YouTube. So this has been a while. Um, but that saw, that saw ended up running really well. And then later on, I came across the second one, which was in a little bit better cosmetic condition and it ran, it was a good running saw, but I never really ran it for, well, I, I didn't run it for probably about a year of owning it. And one day I just pulled it out and um, decided I was gonna try to run it. And I found out the, the mounts were busted on it and stuff like that. And I didn't figure that out till I put a bar on it, <clears throat> but Anyway, that saw got put on the back burner again because I was like, well, finding mounts for this thing is going to be a little aggravating. So I just waited patiently. And one day a fellow posted some mounts for the thing and they were NOS mounts. They were a little expensive, but again, when you own something like this <clears throat> and parts come available, a lot of times you just have to get it as soon as you see it, because if you don't, somebody else will. Um, so that's what I did. I got them and I got them put on the saw and 
I ended up having to put a fuel line in that saw and a few other things. And I finally got it running. Well, I got it running good and I decided I really didn't need two 2100s. So I sold the first one, the one that I built or put the piston in, I should say. I sold it to a fellow in Canada and he loved it. He absolutely loved it. Um, both of mine, they were both 2100s, like I said, and uh, they had full wraps on them. This is the only one I've ever seen with a half wrap. The half wrap on these models are more rare than the full wrap models. Go figure, huh? Most saws, full wraps are rare, especially like on a 266 or 272. Those handles are very rare, if y'all know. Um, but anyway, we're finally at a point here where we can slap a bar on this thing. I'm gonna be running this 32 lightweight Oregon bar. I like this bar a lot. It's not my bar, I wish it was, but it's a really cool bar. I figure this will be plenty enough for what we're gonna be doing. Just to try it out, put a little load on it. See how it's gonna act. See how it's gonna act. Get it up on the table a little more here where it don't try to fall off. Go ahead and tighten the tensioner up a little bit. All right, you got the bar situated. It's not fully tight yet, but we're gonna get go ahead and get the clutch cover on. I like to go ahead and tighten my chains up just a little bit so that way I don't have so far to go once I put the clutch cover on. That's the clutch cover for this saw. It's actually in really well, really good shape, and it's got a chain break on it. The early, the 2100s, a lot of them didn't have chain breaks, so that's pretty cool. This is the first one of these in, I've ever seen in person with a chain break, so pretty intrigued. And the chip flap is in good shape on this saw. It's got the band still in it. Nobody ripped that out. That gets ripped out a lot, especially, or used to, loggers. You gotta think, at the time these saws were made, loggers weren't used to that kind of stuff, and it was just extra weight and stuff in the way, so they was like, I don't really need this, and they a lot of them would rip it off early on in the saw's life because they didn't, you know, they didn't use that stuff. It was just right around the time chain breaks started coming around on saws. Uh, I don't know how long this saw's been sitting. I'm assuming it's been sitting for a long time. When I got it, everything was stripped off the PTO side. And like I say, I just put her back together last night. New crank seal. I'm assuming that's why it was taken apart. I inspected the bearings. Everything seemed to be okay there. It didn't have no play. Uh, this saw don't seem to have a whole lot of time on it. It was used, but I don't think it was logged with for a long time because it would be beat, beat up a lot more than it is. Like a lot of these saws were, were they were logging saws, so they, they gotta be used. Logging or heavy tree work, but a lot of these were logging saws. Chain tension seems fine. On these longer bars, I like to, to be able to pull them down and see you know, five, six links. I don't go real tight on them. I always like to tighten my back bar nut up first too because that seems to uh, situate the clutch cover a little better and kind of 
get the bar where it should be. Because if you, if you tighten the front one first, sometimes it wants to make the clutch cover go sideways and the bar go sideways. And then when you try to tighten it down, it just puts everything in a bind. So a lot of times that's what I like to do. Just make sure they're good and snug. All righty. She is barred up. All right, let's uh, get this baby. Make sure she's got fuel in her and some bar oil. I know it don't have no bar oil in it, so we're gonna go ahead and put some of that in there. And then uh, we'll meet you back outside. All right, we're outside. Here's the O36 Pro. It's Mr. Kevin Jackson saw. He uh, purchased this off my buddy, Brennan. And uh, we're just gonna come out here Run it a little bit, try it out. Make sure she's solid. It's an all stocker saw, there ain't been nothing done to it. Not even a muffler mod. Both saws are stock, like I say, the 2101. First time it's even been ran, and I don't even know how long. It might run, it might not, we're gonna find out. Cold starts on both saws, we're gonna let them warm up a little bit, and then uh, we'll make a few cuts with each saw, get them good and warm, and see how they act. So. Here we go. Six. Brennan got a pant leg full of sawdust. 
Ready to go home. Ready to go home. Mr. Kevin. All right, next up we got a little 026 Pro here. It's a clean little saw. Clean, clean little saw. It's got enough for, got enough for about 12 and a half cuts. We got one. <laughs>
there she is. The muffler's working loose on it for some reason. I'm gonna have to check that out. See how that, see what, why it's loose. Or if it was just loose from before, I haven't had the muffler off on this saw yet. So, um, I don't know. Uh, it's smoking a lot, so Mike did tell me something about how he thought oil bar oil was getting into the gas on this saw I, I was it started to clear up some uh did you can see it's smoking right now that's just burning off residual oil that was on it the saw has been sitting for a long time uh as far as i can tell uh, mike could probably tell how long it's been sitting for sure but um, and it's been sitting on a shelf here for a while, so it's probably had some oil drip down on the muffler from other saws and, and whatnot. So it's burning all that off. Um, but it seems to run fair. Um, it's starting to act up a little weird because the muffler's coming loose. But, um, it, for something to have been sitting as long as it has, it's running fair. I think we got a decent uh, platform to start on for modifications here. Um, I wanna look a few things over. I'm gonna pull that muffler off and check out the oil lines that are behind it. Make sure they're not busted or something because that could be, it could be getting some oil from that. 2100s or 2101s got muffler. They got oil lines behind the muffler um that was actually what was wrong with one of my 2100s it wasn't when i got it it wouldn't oil the manual oiler would work but the automatic would not and it was because of that that line i just ended up snipping it and putting mine back on i actually had enough slack still left to be able to put mine back on so that's what i ended up doing to fix it but this one here seems to be oiling uh, that's why I kind of said I was going to ease into this one. I didn't really rip on it hard starting out. I was letting it warm up some more. These big saws take a while to warm up. This saw is 99 cc's. And it's old, so they take a little while to warm up. I like to get them good and warm before I reef on them. Um, but, yeah, she, uh, she seems to be a decent platform. So we're gonna, like I say, we're gonna check out that that muffler situation. And hopefully it was just a fluke and maybe it vibrated loose or something like that. Uh, like I say, I really haven't spent a lot of time on this thing yet, but we're fixing to, fixing to uh, go ahead and dive into this thing, I guess. See what we can uh, come up with to make this thing run even better so uh anyway that's gonna be it for this one uh i know it wasn't super exciting like i said but just figured i'd bring y'all along let y'all uh see what i'm working on for those that are always wondering what my current projects are what what's andrew doing or what's drew doing well this is what i'm doing folks this is what i deal with uh I have saws sent to me a lot of times. I don't do a lot of port work for other people, but a lot of times when I do get port work for other people, it's usually um, basket case saws, stuff that's been sitting for a while or has an issue. So a lot of times I have to go through it and fix the issues before I can even begin to port. I don't, like I say, I don't like to, uh, to port a saw that's not solid because a lot of times when you port them, they just get worse. The issue, if it's got an air leak, the air leak gets worse. Um, if it's having fuel delivery problems, the fuel delivery problem gets worse because it's ported. Now it needs more fuel. If it's got an intermittent spark issue, something like that. That's only going to get worse. So I like to get my issues straightened out on these old ones before we do anything to them. Um, but anyway, that's what I know about this one so far. That's where we're at with it. I don't know any more than you guys do. This was the first time this I've cut wood with this saw. Um, so you're going to have little issues with these old saws. You just have to be patient. 
and fix them as they arise and go with the flow that's what i like to do but uh that's gonna be it for this one folks we'll uh we'll catch you on the next one i might do a little video on tear down of this thing and might take you along for a little bit of the port work here and there can't film everything it's a little aggravating it and it's time consuming but uh we'll uh we'll definitely uh probably take you along for the tear down and whatnot for this thing and, and maybe some reassembly and show you kind of what we've done with it the mike kind of wanted to see where we're going with it so we'll probably show him and uh that's gonna be that <laughs> hope y'all enjoyed um uh, like i say don't forget to like comment subscribe you know tell me what you think we're gonna try to start filming what we do whether it's exciting or not um I mean, everybody always tells me to do it, so that's what we're going to do. But uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Stay tuned. If you want to see more of this saw, over and out.